Hello, everybody. First of all, come on, let's stand on our feet. How you doing? You guys ready for a great night? Yeah. All right, we're here to do one thing. We're here to encounter God. Amen? Amen. And you know what? What I've learned is that if we're hungry, if we'll draw near to Him, He'll draw near to us. Amen? That's what we know. Yes, yes. Unity is a powerful principle. I mean, we know that they were in one accord in one place and the Holy Spirit fell, right? Amen. So, we want to, so our whole goal is to encounter God, to give ourselves fully to Him. Let's call it abandoned worship. Amen. We're just going to abandon ourselves to the Lord tonight. You with me on that? We're going to go in together? All right. All right. Now I'm going to read the word and you're going to respond to the word. Okay? You ready? Here we go. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Come on. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him. Tell Him right now. Tell Him how thankful you are. The Bible says, and bless Him. Come on, let's bless the Lord right now. Just bless Him. Father, we bless you. Here's the last verse. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. Let's just raise our hands. And let's just come right in to the presence of the Lord. Let's enter into His courts with praise right now. Let's enter His gates. Thanksgiving is the ticket to the gate of heaven. Thanksgiving is the ticket to the gate of heaven. Father, in Jesus' name, we come into your presence. We are hungry. We are hungry and we are thirsty. We, are, we long for you in the land of the living, Father. Lord God, we ask you to show up in this place like you've never showed up before. We ask you to do what only you can do. We ask you, Lord God, to draw us. We ask that we hear your voice. Father, we thank you and praise you right now. We glorify your precious name. Come on, let's hear you. Will you raise your voice right now? Come on. Come on, come on. Give it a Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. With the voice of trying.
And Father, well, we could never begin to tell you with all of the years that we have and all of the moments and with every breath, if I started now until they put me in the ground, it would never be enough. But Father, I thank you that you said that authentic, transparent, genuine, vulnerable worship is pleasing to you. A son, a daughter. You don't require fancy songs. You don't require lights and awesome sound systems, good guitar parts, drums. You don't require any of that. But Father, you're looking for my heart tonight. You're looking for a son that is willing to be a son. You're looking for a daughter that is willing to again find her identity in you and you alone. And so tonight, Father, God, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor to your name. And we ask you, God, that you would have your way. God, we know that you'll multiply the praise of your people. God, we know that you'll multiply the sounds of singing and rejoicing to spill long outside these doors into a hurting region on the Highway 80. God, into every hotel, into every motel. God, in, in, into every meth lab. God, into every addicted space. God, into every marriage. God, into every house. God, into every year of every prodigal. God, we call them home right now in Jesus' name. God, multiply the praise of your people. God, I thank you that I, when I look out here tonight, I see an army rising up. Every tribe, every tongue, every denomination. One body, one body. Come on, somebody say one body. Say we're one. And Father, we look to the audience of one tonight and say, have your way. Have your way in Jesus' name. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Come on, I, I challenge you. Just have, have fun tonight. Celebrate him like you never have before.
to us but to your own name be blessed in your own glory and power to be enthroned Father to come and tabernacle in this place with us God to set up camp right here in the middle of us God in this praise
that tonight. No matter what I find myself, no matter the mess I find myself in tonight. As I survey the landscape of my life, as I look back in my rear view, I see every mess that I was in, every pit that I was in, every struggle that I found myself in. Inevitably, before it was over, I saw the hand of God extended on my behalf. I saw his hand reach down and pick me up no matter where I was at. In fact, just like your word says, even when I tried to make my bed in hell, Father, you were always there with me. You were always there with me. You never leave me. You never, come on, you never leave us. You never, closer than any brother, closer than any friend, Lord. Father, we just declare tonight, God, let it be the center of our worship, no matter what we're seeing. In fact, the heart of the place that we're in, all the more, Father, you're always good. Yes, However strong the fight is, the stronger the fight, the more the truth reigns that you're always good. Yes. There's never a better time to give a sacrifice of praise than if you find yourself in a battle tonight. In fact, I share this all the time, and it's so simple, but it's so profound. It's really no sacrifice of praise at all. If it's simple, if it's easy, if you find yourself on a mountaintop tonight, if everything is good, if you're just tiptoeing through the tulips, it's easy to give God praise. But the goods, the gold is in the refinement. The gold comes from the refinement. Come on, somebody. So I want to challenge and encourage you tonight that however, however fierce the battle rages, However strong it seems your adversary is tonight, your God is bigger, your God is stronger. Your God is not just able, but he's available tonight. He's not just able, but he's available. He's Father God that stands before you and all around you tonight with his arms extended, saying, come just as you are. Come just as you are. Don't wait for the battle to be over. Don't wait to be cleaned up. Don't wait till you have all the answers. He's the one that says, I've got a table spread in the presence of your enemy, the presence of your situation, in the, pre in the middle of your circumstance. How many of you tonight will heed the invitation would find yourself there at the table of the Lord with your God? Lock eyes with him right now tonight. He is all that you want. He is all that you need. He's more than enough. place tonight. Do you love his appearing? Come on, tell him right now. Follow him. Yeah.
Come on, you guys sound good. Look at that. Your name is love. I love that. Always fine. Always fine.
perspective shifted and he saw the army of the Lord of hosts surrounding his enemy. Listen, I want to tell you tonight that if it look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by the Lord. Oh, if it look like
your repentance there? Psalm 125, verse 2. Psalm 125, verse 2. Can you put that on the screen for me? Because we're going to celebrate if, if you can. This is going to really matter. Read this with me. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, come on, somebody. So the Lord surrounds his people. That's you. That's me. Hallelujah. Come on, he's surrounding you right now. Come on, one more time. Come on, man. Drag it up. Come on, come on. says that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses a word is confirmed. So just take a moment and listen. Let the Holy Spirit speak to your heart. As we were in worship, I was worshiping and I was just praying and um, I've been through, man, the past two, two and a half years have been some of the roughest of my life. And uh, there's been so many times that God has just told me to move, take a step. Any of y'all been there? He's just saying, take a step, right? Um, is there anyone that said, God, I don't know the step to take? Yeah. Okay, here's the word. I heard prayers that I've prayed and that we've prayed over this season, this past season, many of you, just like me, that would say, God, I want to obey, but I can't see my way clear. Does that resonate with anyone? Okay. And here, here it is. Catch it. What God is saying is you don't need to see your way clear. All you need to see it's me. That's it. 
And it's just so, the Holy Spirit just works so crazy because it's like, that was stirring in me. I shared it with Pastor Tom, Pastor Adam, started singing, you know, that you surround me. I feel surrounded, but Lord, you surround me. And can I? Okay. This is something when our obedience in faith meets the anointing, that's when miracles happen. Okay? So here's what we need to do. Is if that was a word that was for you and it confirmed something in your spirit. What I want us to do is I want us to I want you to take a second, stand up, come down here, and we're gonna pray because there is an anointing to lift the darkness. Now listen, this is not this is not necessarily sin that I'm struggling with. This is confusion. This is just dark situations. This is this is I don't I don't know. I I, I thought I was heading in the right direction. But all of a sudden, now one more thing, I would love for some people like Mr. Ed and Joe to kind of come behind Pastor Jim, Manning, if you'll come behind these guys, because what we need to do is if you, if you feel that you have an anointing to lift and break the yoke off of people, come down behind these people and just, we're going to, we're going to pray. Okay, yeah, you do. Hey guys, let's, let's do this a little different, okay? Real different. I'll tell you what, let's do. You, uh, you guys just all shift down that aisle. Just shift down the aisle. All the way down. Everybody shift. Everybody just shift. Because we're going to pray for every one of y'all. So just shift down the aisle. We're going to do like a little, we're going to do a paternal prayer. So just go, keep going. Go all the way to the back. Go all the way to the back. And just stay in line. Stay in line. Take, you don't have to hold hands, guys. Take your hands off. Just walk freely. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Amen. That's good right there. It's just Jeremiah, we're gonna jump right out here. We're gonna jump right out here. We're gonna Okay guys, now listen. Is Adam with me? Adam, we're gonna we're gonna rely upon you for something. I don't know, but we're gonna we're just gonna anoint every person. Okay? So whatever you want to bring while we're doing that. We're just gonna let them walk down and walk through and we're going to and listen, here's what we want you to do. Okay? We want you, Charlotte, we're going to need you down here. Okay? We're, we want you to believe the minute that we touch you, if I say touch. When the minute you're touched, you're touched is your faith point. When you're touched, you're releasing your faith. And listen, remember what Jeremiah said. Now, let's, go, let's go down there. Wait, 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 let's not do that. Let's not do that. This is, this is different. Don't, do, don't you guys do that. Okay, just get rid of that. Okay. Down here. Down here. We're going we're going, we're going to do this as leaders. Okay, so down here. Yeah, get down there. And then what we're going to do, we're going to turn. You guys are going to come this way. Now, wait a minute. Don't need, just just be cool. Everybody be cool, okay? Uh, really, we got to get this in order. Let everybody say decent in order, okay? Now, here's what I'm trying to say. This is, the word was that there is an anointing to break this darkness off of you. So the minute you're touched, you're going to receive a breakthrough. Amen? All right. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Aaron and Jeremiah and Roderick and Sean and I, and we're going to, we can, you guys can come through the line in two, just the guys on this side, get touched by people on this side, the people on that side, get touched by people on that side. If you want to stop for a minute, that's fine. We'll flow right around you. All right. So if you get touched and you get a little something going on, that's fine too. All right. So we'll, we'll deal with that. All right. All right, so we're going to do two. Everybody say two. Okay, get, get side by side this way. So two, two, two. If you're on that side, you're going to get touched on that line. And if you're on this side, you're going to get touched by people on this side. Okay? Are right, you ready? Now, before we go now, we're going, to, we're going to get back in the flow of worship. So let's start a song. Everybody say worship. And then say anointing. Now, you know what God's about to do? He's about to open some of your eyes. Darkness. No more, no more struggle. Confusion is going to be released. Hallelujah. Confusion is going to be broken. There's going to be clarity. I say clarity. So you're, going to know who, you're going to know who to marry. Hallelujah. 
You're going to know who, who to date. You're going to know what. You're going to know who to break up with. Hallelujah. Not your husband. Not your husband. You're going to know. God's going to release clarity. If I say clarity. And freedom. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Let's just sing. Let's sing at it when you're ready. All right. We're not, we're not, we're not going to go yet. Let's just be patient. Just, just, just worship. Let's all raise our hands. You guys can stand back up. Just stand up if you'd like. And let's just work. Let's get in the flow of the Holy Spirit.
listen for a minute, okay? What I want to do now is just, I want to just call upon a couple of people that I want them to share the heart of the Lord for this moment for us. All right, so we're just going to share. If you were going to say something from God, what would you say to us in this moment? So that's what we're going to do. You guys ready to hear the voice of the Lord? Let's just listen. Let's listen. Because he wants to talk to us. You know, David said, I am not like those who go down to the pit. And then he said, if I don't hear you, in other words, he's saying, it is your voice that makes the difference. And then he said, even if I'm in the pit, he said, I'm not like those who go to the pit. And then he said, even if I hear your voice, he's trying to say that in the pit, we have to hear his voice. Because why? Because his voice is the difference. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things you do not see. When God speaks, faith is released. When, you're, when His voice and your faith connects and collides at the same time, all of a sudden, faith inside of you is released. And what God says to you can and will happen. No matter how impossible it may seem. So we want to hear what the Lord is saying. Let lame come first. Just Whatever God's saying to us. You know, the Lord showed me about us going into deep waters. God wants us to step in to deep waters. And when we step in to deep waters, something will take place that did not take place in the ankle deep water. Get out of the ankle deep water. Get out of the knee deep water. Get over your head. Jump in. Dive in. And as you dive in, watch what God will do on your behalf. There's nothing impossible with God. With men, it's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. So jump in. Jump in, jump in. Jump in, jump in. Who's that for? Come on, who's who's needs to jump in? Come on, just jump on in. That's what God wants from you. I just hear that as an invitation from the Lord. It's the Lord inviting you into the next place for Him. Alright, so Mike Fox. Come here, Mike Fox. I want to hear your heart for what the Lord is saying. Uh, today my wife asked me, she said, uh, if things, if things are possible with God, we just let God do it. But it's kind of like it's kind of like this oil. This oil will not do anything sitting there. But with faith in Christ that lives in us, if we open this oil and we use this oil, then there's power in Jesus. We have to be obedient and put our hands to the plow. And then we'll see God get us in that water. When we get in that water, we have to swim. Right? But who gives us the power to swim? God gives us the knowledge and the heart. And it's by His Spirit and His power we'll swim. We'll go up the current. There'll be new rivers in the desert, it says in Isaiah. There'll be a place that you can't see. A thing that you can't do of your own, but you have to put your faith in Him and open the bottle 
and use the oil just like the lady did. She poured the oil all over Jesus. And what did she say? Oh, the man. Wow. Woo. Can you imagine that lady pulling that oil over, over the head of Jesus and those Pharisees looking at like, wasted a year's wage. No, she didn't waste anything. She put her faith in Jesus and she used her oil and she poured that oil. She gave it all. So, wow, I didn't, I didn't expect to be able to give a word, but thank you. I thank you for everyone showing up tonight. What a Friday night football we had, huh? Woo! And how many of you want to hear from Miss Charlotte? Amen. Come on, let's hear from the first lady. Let's see what the Lord says. Holy the Father wants us to know more than anything that when He gave His Son, it was because He loved you so much. But that love, you can either accept it or reject it. It's a gift. It's a free gift. But not only did He give His Son, but He sent His Holy Spirit to lead God and to direct us. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid. In Acts chapter 1, verse 70, or verse 8, it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you know, I have a tendency to believe that everybody wants that power and that that, that extra fuel to the fire on their life. And not everybody receives it. When I pray for people, sometimes I know the ones that receive it, they're so open to just the power of God coming upon your life. And there's those that they, I feel the walls and they're afraid. Don't be afraid. Every gift that God has is good. And you see, when we believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three that are one and the Holy Spirit's living inside of us, we realize that that raised Christ from the dead lives in us. But some of us are living below that sonship. They, they don't realize that, that you have been adopted into the kingdom of God, that you, have, you are now accepted in the beloved, and you are part of the family of God, and you're not alone. You're not alone. But if you don't unlock the power of God in your life, you will never experience what God has for you. By grace, you have, through faith, you have been saved. And through faith, you receive the power, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. He says, lives in me, quickens my mortal body to life and to healing and health. And if you are sick in your body, if you have need, God says, I supplied all of your need according to my riches in glory through Christ Jesus. But we have to reach out by faith. And the Bible says the violent will take it by force. The more you want to receive from God's kingdom, when you believe that he provided it for you, and you have a vision of that, you will go after it with everything that's in you. You will not sit back in church anymore and just enjoy a worship service, but you will participate because you know that worship is a weapon against oppression, against fear, against doubt, against all your enemies. But once the enemy sees you worshiping and giving praise to a king who's worthy of all praise, Church. Did you know that? The enemy 
does not care if you come to church and be a good church citizen as long as you keep your mouth shut and your hands by your side and you keep quiet when we are worshiping the king of kings of glory
got the baton, whatever it's called. Whatever that thing's called. Pick it up. Take it. Run with it. Somebody needs to run in here tonight, man. Somebody needs some healing in here tonight, man. Do you want some more joy tonight? Do you want some more peace tonight? God is saying, I'm giving it to you. So just receive it. So just receive it. And as we sing these next two, three, whatever songs, I really encourage you to come up here and just take it. When something is offered, you just take it. For I spoke the word, you were singing all the way. You were bringing so, so good to me. For I took breath, come on, you breathe your life.
We thank you for your faithfulness. Great is our faithfulness. Oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. They fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever be. Come on, let's let your hearts cry. Let's your testimony. Yes. This is it right here. This is your last chance to give it all to him. This is your last chance. You guys ready? Yes. It has been such a good night with you all. Thank you so much. I need to make sure I'm capable in the right spot. I always get this song wrong. The band picks on me. You guys just love worship. Jesus with other brothers and sisters. Come on, give him a praise, give him a praise, give him a praise. I'll bring your cars, they'll all be sweet. Our heart on hearts, I could not find. In desperation, I'll turn to heaven. Oh, man. 
cross You're buried behind my breath He gets to read How well the sun start acting like he's alive and I don't know about you but where I was when he found me when he picked me up and put me on solid rock when he picked me up and he, when, when everybody threw me away and everybody said I had no value when everybody said that he's a throwaway God said that's my first round draft pick I want to heal put him in my starting lineup and he did the same with you and he did the same with you and he did the same with you so can you give it one more time just a good my God is alive shout out to Because when they were in prison and they had stripped and beat him, both of them, they started to sing. And the shackles, it, it, it says that the ground shook and the prison shook and the chains fell off and the, the prison door swung open. But listen to me, they weren't the only ones in the prison. 
See, it was their shout, but their shout equaled their freedom. And if we want Longview saved, see, your, your praise isn't just about you. Your praise is about your mama. Your praise is about your children. Your praise is about your cousins. And your praise is about your friends. And it's about your high school. And it's about your city. And it's about your state. Because when you begin to shout and praise, everybody in the cell gets free. And this is what I, this is what God told me. God's coming with a holy interruption. And people who aren't asking for it are getting it. People, people who aren't looking for it are getting it. People who aren't praying are getting it. They're carrying a boy out of the city of Nain and he's dead. And the mother's behind the casket weeping. And Jesus happens to walk up on a funeral. And he says he puts his hand on the casket and tells the, the, the woman to stop. And he says, boy, wake up. And he calls the dead boy out of the casket. Notice the dead boy wasn't asking for it. He was dead. He was dead. And I, I believe that if the church will begin to pray for and fight for people who can't fight for themselves. And if people will begin to pray for people who can't, don't know how to pray. And people, if you begin to worship with people who may not come into this building, Jesus might start interrupting some people's lives and say, I know you are asking for it, but I showed up anyway. I know that you are believing, but I showed up anyway. I know that you are praying, but I answered it anyway. And I don't know about you, but you may not have no sons who are away from Jesus, but somebody has a son away from Jesus. You may not have a daughter who's away from Jesus, but somebody in this vicinity has a daughter. And I believe that Jesus is coming with a holy interruption if the church shall. This is what we're going to do. Really fast. We're going to shout. Give God a shout of praise one more time. I'm going to put this microphone down. I'm going to shout with you. And y'all are dismissed. But I need you to shout like you have some friends on mess. Because listen, I, I need you to shout. But I, I'm dead. I got teenagers. Tell me I'm suicidal and I don't know why. Let's go, Brian. How about every Wednesday someone comes up here and they show me cuts on their arms and they don't know why they're doing it. We can't play games. Satan's playing for keeps. And so I need you to shout for a minute for people who may not have a voice. And I need you to believe for people who can't believe for themselves. And I believe that if the church would begin to humble themselves and pray, not just worship, but pray and worship, but if, if they would just believe for teenagers who are suicidal and don't know why, that God would interrupt their life and they're not praying. I don't, I don't know what it is that's going on in this city, but I promise you that Jesus is coming and he's going to work. And I promise you one thing, if we all going to see the suicidal being free, and we're going to see the depression break, and we're going to see insecurity die.
in Jesus' name. And I know it has nothing to do with this worship set, but it's all right. I'm going to pray. Father, Father, I pray that you would begin to break the church's heart for what breaks yours. Father, I thank you that we will not settle for good worship nights and good sanctuary and good services. But, Lord God, who begin to fight for people who can't fight for themselves. Father, I thank you that we would not just enter into the presence of God, but we would carry the presence of God with us. And outside of this place, that we've been refreshed and encouraged, but we're going to see somebody in Target, and we're going to see somebody at Walmart and football games and in the parking lots. And God, I pray that you would awaken your people to care for people. I thank you that you would awaken the people under the sound of this voice that would not just worship God, but they would learn to reflect with God and learn to give God and to learn to move in the power of the Holy Spirit to say, our oh God, our world is in trouble and our world needs Jesus and our world needs us now more than ever and not just worship and not just praise, but people who care about people and people who love people. And I pray, Lord God, right now, over this place, with every hand raised, I thank you, Lord God, that revelation of the knowledge of Jesus Christ will be so real. I thank you for a people that's believing for God to move in a powerful way, that the next move of the Holy Spirit is going to be unseen like never before. It's not nothing we've seen before. It's greater than anything we've ever seen, that you're going to receive text messages, that Jesus appeared to be in my room, that Jesus spoke to my heart in a dream, that Jesus, a man named Jesus, from every nation, from every tongue, from every tribe, from every race, or your background, or your ethnicity, but God, nobody. God bless.